Hey guys, welcome back to The Woodshed. Today we're going to be working on a song called Once the Teardrops Start to Fall. It was written by Claire Lynch. She's an awesome songwriter and I hope she writes a million more songs. It's always classy to credit the songwriter when you're doing stuff. Yeah. So um, this one is one I recorded on a record called Wishes on a Neon Sign. And I've since been playing it just on the doro by myself and singing it and it's super fun. What I love about the song is it's in G, so um, we get one chord for nothing basically, <laughs> some open strings to work with. And uh, it's really just G, C, and D, and that, that makes it, uh, it takes the stress out of it and we can just have fun playing the song, so I love that. And I made an arrangement that is um, kind of muted for the verse so I can get all the words out and then opens up in the chorus to kind of support everything. Um, and the dobro kind of almost functions like a voice in the chorus, giving a little harmony part. So um, I thought it would be a fun thing to, to show you guys. So when I sit down and I'm about to do a song in G or somebody at a jam calls, all right, this one's in G, what I do in my head is I say, all right, all right, G, what's the four chord? What's the five chord? Just so I have those basic chords, those are the usual suspects, you know, those are the ones that are going to come up again and again in this key. So I think, all right, that's the one, and if you just count up the scale, you'll find the four chord, even if you don't know it right away, if you haven't memorized it yet, it's totally fine. So just count up the scale, you know it in your head, one, two, three, four. I love that about music, it's so mathematical. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, my four chord is at the fifth fret, it's the C. And it's just straight across. I love that it's not all these combinations of strings like guitars. Ah! No, dobro is just boom, C chord. And then, so one, two, three, four. We're gonna get up to the five. You know what it is. Five is the D chord. And that's over the seventh fret. Same thing, straight across. Woo, so awesome. Um, and then back down. And I love it that, you know, when you're on the four or five chord, they're really close together on those frets, fifth fret and seventh fret. You might have little stars on them. You might have dots or something. And, and to get back to the one chord, when it's an open G song, you can just kind of lift up. It looks, well, I'm looking at the video, it looks like I'm still putting my bar down, but really I'm just anchoring on my little fingers that are muting my B strings. You guys know me, I like a, the sound of a power chord. Yeah! If I just lift it completely up. I, I don't like that B string poking out so much. I still use it sometimes. But um, in this case, that sounds better to me. <laughs> All right, so um, you can just kind of lift up. Five, one, awesome. All right. So that's what I like to do in my head. G, C, D. All right, cool. And if you're somewhere where you're trying to play it cool, you could just do it in your head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? All right, <laughs> just to get ready. All right, so onto the arrangement. We're gonna do the verse first, that muted section, and I'll show you how it goes first. So fun. Oh my gosh, I could play that all day. I feel like I feel like a drummer or something, or like a combination of a bass player and a drummer, which is what you have to do when you're playing solo sometimes. But um, or leading a band. If you're leading on Dobro, this kind of thing is really good because the, the drummer or the bass player will be like, oh yeah, now I know what to do. Like they definitely know. So this part I'll break it down for you. Um, on the first beat is the low part. It's kind of a combination of two things. So this that's like the, the bass drum part. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, four. Do it with me. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's basically how it starts. And the part in the middle that I was just singing is a backwards roll. So a roll is any combination of of strings. Um, usually like a forward roll starts with your thumb, one, two, three, is a roll. And we're gonna do a backwards roll. So we're gonna start with this guy, the middle finger. So three, two, one, basically. And 
Oh, I should, I should show you what I'm doing down here too. I'm muting. Um, so I'm taking my, what is this, the ring finger, and sticking it right in front of the nut. It takes a little bit of practice to figure out exactly where you want to put it. If you go too high up, yeah, you don't hear enough note and it kind of sounds sharp. So if you go too far back, you're not going to hear that muted. You'll hear the whole note. So you want to kind of experiment with where to put your, your, your finger there back behind. I'm kind of just rolling the bar up so it's still a G. And I do mute a little bit on this side too um, with my pinky right in front of that cover plate right there. But it does kind of get my hand a little tense if I do it too much on this side. So I'm mostly doing it here. Um, so the strings that I'm using for that roll are the third string, uh, fourth string, I can count, I promise. Third string, fourth string, sixth string. So, and then I go back up to the third string. So it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, cool. And then if you put it together, so uh, let me, I know what I'll do, I'll sing the bass part. Dum, dum. <laughs> I can't really do it that way, <laughs> but you get the idea. You can separate it and kind of practice it that way. So, um, so all together, it sounds like this. So it was super fun. I could play that all day and sing over it, and it's just like just a real solid groove to go by. You're gonna want to get out a metronome to do this. Um, I should probably practice it with a metronome too, even more. Uh, it's been a long time figuring it out, and sometimes it slips away from me. So, <laughs> so it's good to to always go back to that metronome and, and lock yourself in again. Great way to warm up too. Um, so how it sounds with the vocals, I'll show you, and then we'll move on to the chorus. So. Uh, they say life's what you make it, and I know it's true. Cause every day I make myself believe I'm over you. So I break out to do a little fill when I'm not singing. So um, I should let you know what chords are going on there. I start out with that G. And then there's a C. I'm really just playing the bass line. It's C, B, and up to that D chord. And then I'm muting on the D chord, the same strings, uh, but I put my thumb on the third string and I'm pulling my bar back a little bit so it's only on the bottom four strings. That way I can mute the top two strings with the end of my middle finger. I lied. I'm actually, <laughs> actually putting my thumb over all four of those of those bottom strings just so I can keep that same, relatively same uh, lick going on, uh, bass line going on while it's still muted. Just keeping that like that under wraps for a little bit longer. And then you can put any one of those little like. really fun to play a lick and then go right back to that muted sound. It's just a really nice contrast. I still miss you so. And I'll do another, another video where I show you all those little licks, but for now this is just getting the rhythm. Alright, and then when we get to the chorus, the chorus I like to use, uh, like I said, contrast. So it's going to be big open chords, although I'm still only playing the bottom four strings. Um, so I'm playing a big power chord, muting my, uh, my, my B strings for the G. I go up to the C and I'm just doing the bottom four strings. And same thing with the D. So it's really only those three chords, the G, the C, and the D, but every once in a while I'm going down to that B just for a little like sassiness. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I'll show you how the, how the chorus goes. Um, 
Hopefully my neighbors don't mind. I'm going to have to sing out a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, I still miss the soul. Sometimes late at night, I almost hear you sighing. So that, that's the part of the chorus where I just go. And I'm just, my whole bar is going back one fret, one fret back to the beat and back up to the sea. Sometimes late at night, I almost hear you sighing. Right here beside me as I drift away. Try as I might, I just can't keep from crying when those same heartless men. Teardrops start to fall. So you'll notice a couple things about that chorus that uh, I went back to that V again. That's really just B, C, and D. <laughs> Nothing that fancy, but it's kind of the um, the timing that you put on it and the and the amount of slide. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a backwards pull on that on that C chord. I'm going. It doesn't sound that clean when I'm doing it, but I'm going a little for back and then and then up to the D. And then when I uh, at the end of the chorus, I really like the sound of just hitting that D D chord and then letting the vocal carry over kind of a big break before you go settle back into the uh, the muted part again. So. Uh, that's something about the chorus. What did I want to tell you? Oh, right. So the reason I pull my bar back when I'm doing the chorus, you might think, oh, why don't you want to have that big old chord up there? Sometimes late at night, I almost hear. You could have your bar all the way across, but the thing is, I'm singing this note. Na, 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 almost. So I'm singing the top note right there, that G note on the fifth fret. Um, of the top string and I don't like to play the note that I'm singing and a lot of singers don't like it either so <laughs> because it's it's kind of hard to stay in tune and so instead of fighting for the same note if you pull your bar back down um, even if you're on that almost it's more of a support it's kind of a harmony note so I do that there where I'm just playing a little bit lower and it gives my my vocals some room um, and the same thing happens towards the end where I'm climbing up from the C to the D when those same so the vocal part that I'm doing sometimes I get confused between what am I singing and what am I playing um, when those same heartless memories gotta go when those same I'm climbing up the third of the chords and the reason I know that is because dobro is so awesome we have the one three five of the chord just laid out for us every time we have a chord it's so great so it's so good for singers and um, for singing harmony too and just figuring out the harmony because usually if the vocals on one of those three notes you can just play one of the other ones and it's a harmony automatically so if I figured out that my voice is going up and I'll say, then I'm going to play the, the third below that. So I'm going up the lowest string from the fifth fret. When no say, when no say, because if we were on the same string, when no say, all this memory, uh, it's fine. It's just not as good as when no say, all this memory is come to Teardrops start to fall. And then you're back down to that um, that muted part, which is super fun. I hope you learn it. Um, so I'm going to make uh, a G warm up video for you guys to play along. And then I also thought I'd make a jam video for this song so that uh, there'll be some open solos so that you can play along with me and maybe I can, I can rope Craig into playing bass with us too and we can just trade solos and then we'll be ready for when someday we meet at a campsite and we can play together. Yay! And you'll be like, Abby, play that song. 
and hopefully I won't have jamnesia and forget all the songs. That's what happens to me at jams. I have to like write down my songs on my hand, otherwise I get nervous and forget. <laughs> so um, you can look for the, the tab for this lesson is going to be available. Just email me. Um, eventually I'll have a whole page of tab for these lessons. Um, and I'm also thinking about doing a Dobro class. So definitely email me if you're interested in that or if there's anything you want to learn um, that I know how to play, let me know because I'm happy to make more videos and I'm happy to get you guys into Dobro. It's the best instrument there is. So. Um, have fun, and I'll see you next time at the woodshed. Bye.